title of the video, you guys know what it's about, and I'm kind of beat, beating a dead horse here, but we're going to be talking about Black Ops 6 Zombies and the issues the game has that a lot of other people are complaining about, but a lot of this is my personal experiences and bugs and stuff with the game over the course of launch. So this list I have compiled from launch or doing the New Zealand tricks, so I've been playing since the 24th all the way up until November 1st. Now I'm actually recording this on November 3rd. I have recorded this video twice over and I just didn't like how it turned out and it was too long. This one's probably gonna be as long as well because I'm gonna probably be rambling a lot just like this intro. So let's just immediately jump right into it. Something I forgot already to mention because scatterbrain, uh, these are all of my opinions and my personal experience with the game some of these in here as well are the general consensus of the community as well but uh yeah opinion warning and uh my experience warning for anyone who doesn't like what i'm about to say because it's going to be overall it's going to be negative and i know a lot of us are tired of negative anything but uh so it needs to be said so it can get fixed and make the game better Moving on, I just want to talk about the calling cards and achievements for doing side easter eggs. Now for Liberty Falls there are a lot of side easter eggs, I have done them 10 times over, I've done the easter egg solo 3 times, together with friends, which I recorded the video on that so stay tuned on the channel, the Liberty Falls easter egg will be up soon. Um, once and then with randoms I've done it 3 times, so I've done the easter egg a lot, I've done all of the side quests. And the only calling card you get for the side quest, excuse me, is doing the Liberty Falls bowling Easter egg, which you gotta find, I think it's five or six Mr. Peak's bowling shoes around the map. You gotta find those, shoot those, and then it spawns you in the bowling alley, and then you kinda have to bowl. For the Dark Ops challenge, you get 300 score. But overall, the rest of the Easter eggs, you don't get jack shit for doing. And I understand that side Easter eggs are solely just doing them to get extra rewards inside the match or the game that you're playing. But I think to incentivize players doing the Easter eggs and searching for them would be giving them actual rewards such as animated emblems, animated calling cards, and at the extreme, blueprints and operator skins i don't think anyone wants a fucking sticker i just i just don't think anyone wants a sticker and i don't think anyone really wants a weapon charm unless you get a weapon charm on top of a calling card or emblem um so that being said a couple examples the uh bowling easter egg the second you on um, the second you do the easter egg in full it should just give you a simple animated call, calling card another example is in game there's a way to get uh deadshot daiquiri if you go all the way in the uh, uh cemetery area in the second flight of stairs on the right side there's going to be an open window and if you look far in the distance on the um the fencing you can see i think it's five perk cans and you have to shoot those without missing and then in game you get uh, Deadshot Daiquiri. And I think a cool little reward for players who incentivize doing that would be you shoot those cans, not only do you get the perk in game, but you also get an animated Deadshot Daiquiri emblem of some, sor of, of some sorts. Excuse me. Uh, there's another easter egg where you have to shoot uh, power up icons around the map. There's a instant kill that's on top of the back roof of the church. There is a nuke inside of the um, bank's chandelier. You gotta shoot that with an explosive weapon. Inside a spawn before you jump off the building, turn around and look to the right side of the bridge. Not on the road, but on the little uh, concrete slab. Uh, there's a max ammo. And then if you go towards Ollie's Comics and you go into that one back corner um, towards the roadblock and you look all the way up towards the back of the building, there is a bonus points on top of the um, AC unit, you shoot that, you get a bonus point. Now, I think you should get a calling card once you find all of those on the map or said maps later on. You get an animated calling card that has all of the uh, perk, not perk, all of the power up icons that you shot inside the map. One calling card, it's animated, it looks badass, and you're like, oh, cool. So, I get rewarded for doing the side Easter eggs around the map. There's also a zombie boogie Easter egg where 
in the same area where you're running you open that first door on the right side of the map not the one under the motel and there's the bus there you turn right there's these two viewfinders you view both of them in the same round there's a zombie boogieing on the um cliff in the background you view both of those up in the same round and then the zombies in the uh that round jump up on the bus and start boogieing it's kind of a callback to d machines little side easter egg that they did um you should get a calling card for that that's animated it's called zombie boogie or something and it's got the calling card's got a zombie boogie in and stuff just all that type of stuff for the side easter eggs awarding players not only for in-game rewards because most of them are in-game rewards there's only a couple of them that you get an actual achievement for doing it um, the Etherella Easter Egg and the uh, Bowling Easter Egg, those are the only ones that you get an achievement for. I think not only all of them should award you achievements for doing that because it just rewards the player. It makes them want to do side Easter Eggs if they know they're getting a reward for doing it. And then you get an animated calling card or emblem for doing so. Next up, in my opinion, I do think... As cool as they are, and, and I'm so glad that you get rewarded for doing the Easter Egg, I think the reward should be a lot better. Specifically, the quotes around exclusive calling card should not be the same art design. I'll show you guys again on screen. Uh, for doing the Terminus Island Easter Egg and the Liberty Falls Easter Egg, the early cut cutscene, the early calling card and the standard calling card are the same thing. The only difference is, and I wouldn't really call it a difference, is there's just a golden skull. So I think Treyarch really needs to redesign that. And if you do it early, you get an actual exclusive badass calling card and then what they do right now is when you do the early Easter egg, you get both versions. You get the early one and the standard one. In my opinion, I think they should just only give you the early one and then when guided mode comes out, you can do guided mode and then you can get the standard one. I think that incentivize players more to do the guided one instead of just getting all of it instantly the second you do the Easter egg early. I don't, some people might see that different. That's whatever. Um, but I'm going to move on to that. Next up, we're going to talk about the HUD. There's a lot of issues with the HUD in the game that, I'm ex that I am personally experiencing a lot. And I don't really see anybody else having the problem. I'm sure there's someone else, but... I don't see a lot of people talking about the issue. HUD settings and presets will reset often. I don't know what's causing the issue, but my my HUD settings and presets will just constantly reset itself to default. You don't know how goddamn annoying it is to... It seems like every two games, my HUD will just reset no matter what happens. I've also noticed whenever you get max rank and you prestige no matter what your HUD will reset your operators will reset your loadouts will reset everything and I understand you're prestiging that's kind of the whole point of prestiging but at the same time I'm pretty sure games before this if you prestige it didn't reset your custom classes it kept all your custom classes it just reset the attachments perks equipment etc inside of those classes it didn't reset those just the guns and attachments and all that that were inside of that so that's something that's very annoying and i think that's a, a huge contributing factor is when you uh prestige reset basically you it resets your entire game basically and it's like why is this a thing how did this make past testing i don't know um on top of that your hud settings and presets are the same from mode to mode and that needs changing drastically. HUDs need to be separate from zombies and multiplayer. It even happens with a campaign as well. And I think it's just a complete oversight by Triarch. They give us, in, on paper, this awesome way to customize your HUD. But they don't go as far as to make it separate for zombies and multiplayer. For example, in zombies, I like the more classic feeling. You guys know how much I harp on how I'm a massive world at war elitist essentially and war that war in my opinion is one of the best zombie iterations that we had i will say that being said i also do think black ops 3 was the perfect zombie system point system everything most of the hud turned off the classic feeling make it feel as classic as classic as i can with this more war zonified zombies experience that we've been experiencing since well Black Ops Cold War. Want the metals turned off. If you don't want your zombies to feel like multiplayer and you see like kill chain or extermination or 
all these other weird these metals don't get me wrong the metals designs are pretty badass and the Treyarch art team I'm hoping they designed them themselves and didn't use AI because we'll get to that in a little bit hopefully if I remember but um, yeah if you want your metals turned off but you want to know when you level up get attachments get a new gun etc you can't have that because the notification ID and the metals they're on one slider they're <clears throat> excuse me they're not on separate sliders so if you want metals turned off you unfortunately have to have notifications and metals turned off at the same time that in my opinion needs to be changed they need to be separate sliders Treyarch knows how much the majority of the community wants a zombies inspired HUD we want a unique HUD for zombies we don't want it just to feel like Warzone and multiplayer which for some reason they're so hell-bent on not making zombies the unique game mode that it used to be and they keep pushing and shoving these warzone and multiplayer assets down our fucking throats Even though we're so vocal on stop making zombies feel like the rest of the fucking game there's a whole reason why play people played zombies is it was such a unique experience compared to multiplayer and that's why we had our separate communities and now they're trying to I understand what they're trying to do, they're trying to bring the entire community of COD together, but that's just not how it is. Like, there's people that are gonna solely love multiplayer, solely love Warzone, and solely love zombies. Those all need to be separate. They do not need to be the fucking same. Cause then the entire game just feels boring, broken, it doesn't work half the time. I've gotten to the point where I just don't change the HUD. I just don't fucking care. Um, another point onto that is, I'm on top of uh, zombies and multiplayer, HUD being you know the same it's not different is I don't like playing with the minimap on and when I go jump into multiplayer what I have to do is I have to turn everything back on that I turn off in zombies and then when I go back into zombies I have to turn everything off and it's such a hassle and again it's gotten to the point where I just don't care anymore I don't touch the HUD anymore because I know it's just gonna break anyways PC has this ability to change the um, HUD bounds so that basically means squeezing everything into making it more centered. It's kind of like the safe area for the HUD in general. I don't know why that's not on console. I'm sure they have some excuse like, oh, it's going to break the game. But I see it as is like, if it was going to break the game, then the safe area wouldn't be in the game. The HUD elements wouldn't be in the game. Turning things off, turning it on, and all this other stuff wouldn't be in the game if it was going to break it. There's a lot of weird issues with Black Ops 6. This game's had four years of development but like at the same time it's like there's so many weird issues and visual things and bugs with this game it's like you've had four years to work in this game including extensive testing and yet all of this still makes it through and i don't understand it i don't think we've had a single Treyarch game that's not been a buggy piece of crap like granted this game has been significantly better from cold war and black ops 4 if you guys remember black ops 4 the blue screens of death and Cold War because that that was a legacy feature that transferred over um, I haven't seen any PlayStation players have the blue screen of death with Black Ops 6 so that's good I've only crashed once with this game but I always but I'm experiencing constant weird bugs visual things it's just a whole mess I don't know why every Treyarch release at least of recent feels like a buggy piece of shit every Treyarch game just launches in the most buggy estate but people don't care because it's a Treyarch game. Is that the community overly loves Treyarch in my opinion. They could do the worst thing possible and the community wouldn't fucking complain because they're playing a Treyarch game. Mangler's spam in this game is so unbearable. It's so unbelievably broken. It's so unbelievably unbalanced and it's so unbearable to play the game. Like last night and my constant high round is in the 40. I'm trying to beat my highest round, which is 47 right now. I'm trying to get that to, to, to at least 50. For the life of me, like, I either A, get close to round 50, and I get down because of the ridiculous mangler spam with what it seems like 20 fucking manglers spawn every goddamn round. And it's so frustrating because I'm trying to grind camos. But I can't grind camos because most of the weapons in, in the game, at least at, on high rounds, I should preference, just do fuck all for damage against manglers 
and it's just like, well, now I'm forced to use the ray gun. I'm trying to grind two gu two guns at once for zombies. I've gotten to the point where I've just decided I'm gonna grind the zombies camos first. Fuck multiplayer. Like I'm so tired of the skill-based matchmaking in games. And Black Ops 6 right now is one of the sweatiest Call of Duties I've ever fucking played. And it's it's ridiculous at this point. I wish the devs would play their own games so they knew how bad SBMM is. Fix the manglers. Honestly, just hard code it to where only two manglers spawn in every couple rounds don't make it like again what it seems like 20 every fucking round it's so annoying they spam their ranged attack so many times it almost always hits the player unless you dive out of the way or slide out of the way that's the only time it ever misses it will it will actually hit you around corners i've actually tested this one of the biggest issues in my opinion is and i really hate that they do this because like there's no reason to change this they just do it anyways because they feel like it zombies respawning when you move into a different area and you can watch them physically respawn right before your eyes is so fucking game it's game breaking in my opinion it's so fucking stupid be training zombies in one area and the next area could literally be like two feet away. I walk two feet away and the zombies that aren't immediately up my ass will despawn. And then they will respawn in the area that I walked into two feet away from the area I was just training zombies in. And it makes no fucking sense. And I do not care what excuse Treyarch gives for this. It needs to be changed because I'm so tired of it. I'm so tired of training a massive horde of zombies. I'm living my nostalgic days of Black Ops 1, World at War, and Black Ops 2, even Black Ops 3 to an extent. And I walk into a new area that again, literally is two feet away. And again, the zombies that aren't immediately up my ass, the rest of the train just despawns and it completely disrupts the flow of the game. It disrupts the flow of the map, disrupts the flow of the game. And it really annoys me because I'm like, all right, I'm going to like, I make a battle plan. All right, I'm going to train all these zombies up. I'm going to go run over here, buy these perks, and then run back to the train, kill them all, end the round, etc. You can't do that. If you guys remember the nostalgic days of Black Ops 1, where you're like, hey, hold this crawler, but make sure you feed the crawler. I know there's some of you on this channel that remember saying to your friends, make sure you feed the crawler while I'm doing my you know, real life business or am I just running the map to get perks? I know all, I know most of you that are hardcore players like me that have been playing for the law for the longest time. Remember telling your friends, hold the crawler and make sure you feed him every once in a while. So he doesn't bleed out. Well, in black ops two and three, they changed that. You no longer had to worry about the crawler bleeding out or respawning. You could just leave the crawler or the normal zombie you could just leave him alone and he wouldn't bleed out he wouldn't die off you could not really care if you're doing in-game things for that matter if if some of your friends had to go do things IRL you're like okay I gotta hold the zombie but in this game crawlers will bleed out so they brought back the um, feeding thing but sometimes it just doesn't even work and then normal zombie like if you have two zombies and they have full health they will randomly despawn on top of the issue i just talked about seconds ago and it, it, it's just annoying like crawlers will respawn with legs and full health sometimes and you're like why is this a thing like this is annoying people thinking this game's easy the same players who think this game's easy probably hasn't made it past round 20 or even 15 for that matter uh, or they're using exploits or they're using the ray gun and jet gun and they're not using normal guns at high um, at High rounds. So uh, this game isn't easy. I, I don't care who the hell you are. This game is not easy um, Which I like at the same time because again, I'm the world at war type of player and that game was a two hit down and It made it even worse when the zombies would like magnetize to you and just double swipe you uh, World at war was a hard game and that's one of the reasons why I like it, but in this, I don't know, we're going to move on. In my opinion, the augments take too long to research. Uh, it's something that I think they can uh, balance this is allow the players to research more than one augment if they're going to leave the way it is to research things. And it's by XP, I believe. So the amount of XP you get in game is the amount that goes towards your certain arg augment. Um, if they're going to keep the amount of time it takes to research an augment, just give us the ability to research two or three augments 
And uh, yeah, I think that's a perfect balance in my opinion. A perk that I think this game desperately needs. And at this point, I don't know why it hasn't been in the la latest Call of Duties. Uh, Black Ops 4, no, Bla it wasn't in Black Ops 4. Uh, Black Ops 3 was the last game that we saw this perk and it's a fan favorite perk. And I don't care if it's a clutch perk. I, I, I hate the argument of clutch perks and zombies because I'm a huge proponent of zombies needs to be fun. The player needs to be overpowered. The game just needs to be fun. It doesn't need to feel like a boring piece of mud that you're trudging through. It needs to be a fun game mode. It doesn't need to be overly hard. It doesn't need to be overly stupid to play. It doesn't need these overly like brain blasts to quote Jimmy Neutron to play the fucking game, to do these certain strats. It doesn't need to be that hard. It needs to be a fun game mode, but bring back Double Tap 2.0 for the love of God, please. For short of it, this game desperately needs Double Tap 2.0, especially at higher rounds. Your weapons just don't do enough damage. Again, my highest round was 47, and at round 47, I was using an LMG, and this LMG was the GPMG7, or the FN Mag, for those of you that are uh, gun enthusiasts like myself. When you pack a punch with the max, the biggest magazine, which is a 175 round box mag, when you pack a punch it, it's 320 rounds. At tier three pack and legendary rarity, it was taking, it was taking more than a full magazine to kill one zombie. Next up, uh, some people will more than likely not agree with this one, just like the other previous ones, but uh, when playing maps with a dedicated crew, the game should automatically change your operator along with every other player in your, in your match to the set crew. I know some people are gonna argue as well, it removes player uh, free ability or whatever. I, I don't care. It, the map says dedicated crew, make players play a dedicated crew. That's it. A lot of players are gonna disagree with me on this, but I am very disappointed. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert about the Liberty Falls Easter egg. If you haven't seen it, I don't know how you haven't, or if you haven't done it yourself, spoiler alert. I am very disappointed in the Liberty Falls Easter egg. Uh, to me, and in my opinion, the Liberty Falls Easter egg does not match the cutscene that we got for the map. It doesn't match the map in general, in my opinion. Um, again, we get the most badass cutscene on the planet in Zombies history for Liberty Falls. You see him basically turning John Wick, turn into John Wick with the DG2 Wunderwaffe. Just beating the shit out of zombies and being a ultra, just a badass in general. John Wick, essentially. And then you load into the map and you're like, what? I understand that you're just, you're this special response team that's flown in. And this is happening the same day as Terminus. So I understand that whole point. And I, and I really do think they should have went the world at war route with Nocturne and Toten and Verrucked and gave us generic characters, not operators from multiplayer. Generic, like Project Janus, security forces or whatever they are kind of like what we were in Verrucked we were these four marines that had voice lines they could have done the same thing with Liberty Falls they could have talked granted the operators in this game talk a little bit more in a zombies slang we'll say than they did in Cold War but that being said they could have they could have done so much more with this map I'm still coping to the point where I think there's still way more to Liberty Falls then we're led on to believe. I still think, again, I'm self-aware that this is massive cope and this actually isn't the case, but I still think there's an underground facility that matches with the cutscene. There's still a mansion that we're still able to go to. I don't know if like if it's like classified from Black Ops 4 where it's a high round Easter egg and no one's found it. I've noticed that there are security cameras around the map and hear me out. This is a this is a Hell Mary uh, cope guess here. I've noticed there are security cameras around the map, and I notice when you shoot them, they like they act like dead wire when you shoot them. They spark out electricity, and it's not your standard like you shoot metal and it sparks. It's a it's a whole little effect that makes you look at it and go, huh? It makes you think. So I've noticed there's security cameras around the map, and I've only seen four right now. There's one by Ollie's Comics. There's one by the back entrance of the motel, and there's two inside the bank vault. Uh, inside of the uh, bank, excuse me. And so this makes me, again, I know, cope. For the third time, this is the cope Hail Mary pass. Something tells me if you have dead wire on your gun, 
and you shoot all of the security cameras in the map because i know there's more open some area maybe or maybe blanchard says something that gives you another theory towards another part of the map i don't know again it could be like a high easter egg uh high round easter egg like there is for classified and we at least get a cutscene that explains everything you show us this badass cutscene and then when we do the easter egg it has nothing to do with the underground facility the mansion wrecked off and it has nothing to do you're like doing this weird fetch quest for this weird random scientist who i believe is the same one in the in the cutscene that wrecked off and tells him to like lock down or something i think that's who that is i'm pretty sure that's who that is but yeah it just doesn't match with the the cutscene and the story that we're told so far we have the only thing we have close to sam are the sam trials and she mentions some things here and there about Project Janus and stuff. But like, I was really hoping Liberty Falls would have been a way bigger map in terms of story and in terms of like the map layout itself. I was really hoping there was an underground part where we'd go into the facility and then we could come out on the other side where the mansion would be. I think that would be so cool. And I have a funny feeling that sometime in the game's life cycle, we're going to get a map that's just the mansion. I. And we're playing as these no we're playing as these multiplayer operators and we go around into the facility and then find out that Sam took uh Rechthofen. But we're posing as the Janus security forces. Instead of just, you know, making us play as security the security forces. Uh next up I wanna talk about um player XP and weapon XP and then when the battle pass comes out, have that level up a little bit quicker too. Cause we're about a couple days away for season one. It releases November 14th. It's currently the eighth when I'm picking back up on this video. So I kinda just wanna see player XP and weapon XP tweaked a little bit. Uh player XP, weapon XP, and then when the battle pass comes out, that XP uh bumped up a little bit so it doesn't take so long. Um, in terms of weapon balancing, um, I don't know if this is like a bug. I don't know if this is an issue. Um, I have a very large issue with Black Ops 6's multiplayer and the weapon balance. SMGs in this game are incredibly broken. Um, it's not even my opinion. That's just a stat. There's so many times where you, I'll shoot someone with my assault rifle six times, but they can out damage me with an, uh, an SMG at medium distance and kill me in three bullets, you know, it takes me like six or seven to kill someone. Um, but that being said, it's kind of like that in Zombies 2. I've noticed, um, I have an example for you guys. Again, I don't know if this was like a weird issue and I haven't tested it since, but uh, I had a white C9, which is the MP5. I was at round two and I was essentially one tapping zombies I, and I was aiming for the head for both of these examples and it was one to two shotting the zombies at head a white smg mind you i then bought the green dm10 off the wall in spawn and it was taking six rounds to the head to kill a zombie either though first of all the dm10 is a 308 caliber round and the mp5 in game is chambered in nine mil so it makes zero sense cod has a problem with this every year and black ops 6 is exception excuse me where smaller calibers do more damage minus pistols and higher caliber rounds do less damage makes zero sense i there's not much i can say to it so weapon balancing needs to be tweaked a little bit they have been doing this with their stealth patches and their other patches but i haven't tested this specific thing uh in a while because i tested this at launch right now black Ops six zombies is very it, like don't get me wrong it's very fun but it still feels very annoying to play and it's main i think the main reason why it's very annoying to play is it's because of the mangler spam and the abomination spam and the amalgam spam and the vermin spam it's just it's very annoying at times to play this game and uh yeah it's just i'm really really hoping they nerf mangler spam i heard, i made a dedicated video on this next subject so i'm just going to briefly go over it the prestige rewards for one and two specifically um, it changes the mp5 into looking like an m1a1 thompson and then it changes the model l completely into an stg44 there'll be a link down in the description and an info card up in the corner somewhere for you to watch that full video because i go in depth with that uh another thing i would love to see is uh give us zombie pack-a-punch camos as rewards so for instance and I really love the Origins Pack-A-Punch camo. I would really love for that to be like a prestige reward or a prestige master reward camo. Like you get to a certain level and you unlock the Origins Pack-A-Punch camo as a 
unlock. Same with like the World at War pack a punch camo, the Shadows of Evil, the Mob of the Dead, etc. You guys get my point. Um, next up, another thing that I know a lot of people will agree with is the Vermin spawn per round. Like it, it's really dumb in my opinion that it feels like 30 to 50 vermin spawn uh, like after the first round you get and it's so annoying in my opinion if they're going to keep the amount of vermin that spawn per round not only give us a max ammo but give us like max armor or something or even a full power like three power ups if they're going to keep the amount that spawn per round because it's, it's just ridiculous right now the valve step on solo for the liberty falls easter egg takes too long um I, I really would like them to speed up the progress bar a little bit. So if you're playing the game solo, it's faster to do. Uh, that's something that I would really like for them to do. Side note, I would love for my double XP tokens, battle pass tokens, and weapon XP tokens for Modern Warfare 3 to transfer over. I know it isn't a hard thing to do that. I just really would love them. I, I, I want them to do it. Uh, another thing, in my opinion, the health regen is incredibly slow in this game. It's really annoying, and the game kind of forces you to use stims, which isn't something I really would like to say in a zombies game. It's like, oh, I gotta use stims now because it takes like two minutes to fully regen. That's probably not the real time. I'm just over-exaggerating the time there. But it feels like two minutes, and you're still not health regen. You're still not fully regen. And if a zombie hits you, that just delays it even more. So you're like, okay, well... If I get hit one more time because the health regen is so incredibly fucking slow, I'm going to go down. Also, if you have max jug, it's just like, I feel like if you get juggernaut, it should give you health regen fast. Another thing on top of the pause timer in the game, I know what the, I know why the reason of the pause timer is in the game, but the fact that it's only like 14 minutes and the time doesn't regen when you unpause is kind of ridiculous in my opinion. They can keep the fact that it doesn't, uh, the time doesn't regen when you unpause they extend the time so if they extend the time for 30 minutes a 30 minute pause timer that would be great that's plenty of time to like go get food go cook dinner or go to the bathroom take a break for a couple minutes like i do like the fact that if the timer does run out when you're paused it will just save and quit i do like that feature but again the pause timer in my opinion doesn't last enough uh another small little issue that I've discovered is interacting with things specifically the gobble gum machine the trial machine and the box are very 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 buggy you have to be in this certain sp uh, excuse me this certain particular spot to actually interact with the said items that I just listed and I notice it's specifically even more finicky with the trial machine or activating Easter egg songs it should mute the other audio assets in game so the easter egg song is heard more clearly kind of like what the game does when you find in-game lore and intel that would be cool and something that i can't believe i'm saying right now and right now with season one we are getting a new perk i hope that drops at launch and we're not waiting for all the zombie content until december i hope all the side stuff that they're adding for zombies comes out on day one and then the map comes out um, in December. But that being said, I wouldn't mind if Meal Kick came out. Another perk that I wouldn't mind being added to the game would be Vulture Aid. Now, I have a sneaky suspicion Vulture Aid is going to be added to the game, but I have a feeling it's going to be an augment and not an actual perk. So, uh, if that is a thing, just change it. Just give us, just give us Vulture Aid, please. It was such a, it was probably one of my favorite perks from Black Ops 2. Next up, uh, this is just a personal addition I would like to see and a kind of a throwback to world at war so if you guys remember in world at war there is a perk called machine called ammo matic and it was basically a machine that you could buy for i think it was like four thousand perks and it would give you a max ammo and i believe it also had a cooldown on it to where you could only buy it once per round or something um which i wouldn't even care if you could buy it like multiple times per round i really wouldn't care because it just helps with the ammo situation in the game right now but yeah, it would be really cool if they changed the ammo boxes in the game right now to look like the Ammo-Matic perk machine. It would just add a little bit more zombies flair to the game, and it wouldn't feel like kind of a Cold War port, because those ammo boxes are straight up ported for, from Cold War. So that'd be a nice little addition in my opinion. Uh, another issue I've been experiencing is my operate my operators will just randomly switch for no reason. It also usually happens when my HUD will reset, causing me to have to, to change everything back. Also, I've noticed when you prestige in this game, it not only just resets 
your level, but it resets literally everything. It resets your court, your score streaks. Sometimes it'll re it will reset your settings, which I don't know how that's an issue. It will reset your operators. It will reset your classes. It will reset literally everything in the game. So uh, I don't know if that's supposed to happen, but that doesn't feel like it is. So Treyarch, please fix that because it's really goddamn annoying that prestiging in this game literally resets everything. Um, just like Cold War, I hate the point system, the armor system, and the rarity system. Again, I just think that adds more of that RPG elements that I don't think Zombies really needs. It adds that Warzone and multiplayer feel that Zombies doesn't need. It kind of takes the uniqueness away from Zombies by just constantly porting over Warzone and multiplayer to the game. If they're going to use the excuse of, oh, if we had the Black Ops 3 point system, which is the best point system for Zombies, they'd probably make the excuse of, oh, people would have the map open in like two rounds and change it back to Black Ops 3 that would make the players happy and just make everything more expensive. Just give us the Black Ops 3 point system. There's no reason why it shouldn't be a thing in Zombies. Like, I don't even know why they decided to change it in the first place. But I wouldn't mind if we could research one or more augment. That would be pretty cool. Like, if they're going to keep the pace of the augments of how slow it takes, in my opinion, just allow us to research like one or two. Uh, another thing that I previously mentioned was you run out of ammo too quickly in this game, I think. Um, something that I think if they add Vulture Aid to the game, which I really do think they should, uh, one of the augments for Vulture Aid should be zombies drop ammo packs. I think that'd be pretty cool. They already drop armor pretty frequently, so it wouldn't be a bad thing for them to drop ammo pretty regularly as well. PhD, in my opinion, needs to protect you from all explosive kill streaks, all elemental explosives and the mangler's ranged attack sure it can still like push you but i wish if you had phd it would protect you from the ranged damage um in my opinion the jet gun controls feel like opposite to me because like you suck with the right trigger and then you blow with the left trigger i really do think they need to switch that to where the suck should be left trigger and the blow should be right trigger. Kind of only makes sense in my opinion. Uh, next up, uh, another HUD issue. I still hate the HUD. It doesn't look like a zombie's HUD. It doesn't make zombies unique. It's just ported over for multiplayer in Warzone. Just literally give us black the Black Ops 3 HUD or any iteration before that. And then there you go, there you go. It already adds a little bit more of a unique element to zombies. And then next up we have a small little thing. Um, since we have Liberty Falls, which is set in West Virginia, it kind of makes me wonder if we would ever get a, a Point Pleasant map with a Mothman-inspired map and boss fight. I think that would be pretty cool, and the Mothman is kind of one of my favorite cryptids, so I think that would be kind of cool, in my opinion, but I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. Something that I think a lot of us could agree with, I don't know. I, I might get pushback from this, but I would like to hold more than three plates at a time. I think giving us... They're going to keep this Warzone stuff, so, like, there's no sense in me complaining about the game feeling like Warzone or multiplayer. So, at this point, just give us an armor satchel that we can craft for, like, 2,500 salvage or something, where we can hold 8 to 10 plates. I think that would be pretty cool. And because, well, obviously, they're not going to get rid of the plate system, so... There we go. That just helps the player even more. Uh, vault keys, if we could hold more than one at a time. Because I don't know about you, I'm kind of tired of killing zombies and uh, special zombies and elite zombies. And there's just a bunch of keys laying on the map. And I'm so tired of like picking one up, running all the way to the vault. And, that, and then running all the way back, especially if it's all the way across the map. You guys get my point. Ammo mods, in my opinion, they don't pop as often as they did in Cold War. I really liked how often uh, ammo mods popped. I feel like it takes too long for them to pop. Especially if you have a camo challenge or daily or a calling car challenge where you have to get those elemental ammo mods pop another issue that is spread across between all modes is once again just like the beta i do not have kill or headshot sounds at all or hit marker sounds i don't know what's going on with my game it was like this in the beta it's not like this with Modern warfare 3 so i know it's an issue specifically with black ops 6 again i don't know it's weird you guys have watched the seen the videos before especially the multiplayer ones where i just don't have any sounds all i hear is the metals hitting and that's it so it kind of makes it a little bit weird because Black Ops 6 Zombies is always online, there's an issue, a very annoying connection issue when you're playing solo specifically. You'll be playing the game, and then when it goes to change rounds, you will be disconnected and then reconnected from the game, and it will freeze your game. It will freeze your game for a solid, like, five seconds. And sometimes it will get you down, so 
that's a little downside with the always online zombies gameplay even playing solo so there's an augment for quick revive to where um the augment is if you kill a zombie you will get revived and it will remove quick revive the problem with that though is if you don't have a ray gun or if you're not using an upgraded pistol when you go down you have a normal pm makarov pistol and if you're at higher rounds or anything above like six or above you can't kill anything because well it spawns you with a standard pm makarov with no attachments it's not upgraded for this if you went down no matter what gun you had in your hand you would go down with upgraded mustang and sallies so that's something i think they need to add to the game if you're playing solo go down you have your mustang and sally so you can actually use that augment for quirk revive because right now if you go down at higher rounds and you have that quirk revive augment selected you can't kill anything so you're forced to use a self res so that's something they really need to change in my opinion uh, another thing that i had listed that's now been fixed uh when you would complete an easter egg you couldn't use kill streaks that's now been fixed um, another thing is decoys should last longer in my opinion just like Modern warfare 3s and cold wars decoys they were like in my opinion the perfect amount they were on par with monkeys and the casimirs so i really don't like the nerf they did to decoys because they kind of just make them useless another thing for pistols i would really love if pistols had more than five attachment slots just kind of annoying every other gun you can have eight attachments pistols you can't um, certain pistols I would know like it would make sense to have eight attachments give us more on attachments on top of I would love for pistols to have the reserve and magazine uh, buffed at the base level and pack a punch level. or the Mustang and Sally's when you upgrade them even if you have an extended mag twos you still only have 50 15 I think it's like 10 to 15 rounds with extended mag twos when you upgrade them and then your reserve is only 50 so you only get like three magazines. Yeah, please change that. I, the pistol reserve ammo is ridiculous and it needs to be buffed. I think buffing it to like 200 would be perfect in my opinion. Uh, a little personal issue with the vault right now is if you're in the vault and you click over to the next one. So let's say you're on the first code and then you, let's say you accidentally click over to the, co the second code. You can't go back. It force locks you in whatever code you are. So that's a small little quality of life issue I think they should add. Uh, I already previously mentioned this, but PHE Flopper doesn't protect you from explosive kill streaks. So if you have a Hellstorm and you send it in and one of the missiles hits you, you will take damage. So going back to double XP tokens, I think they should count in game. Just let us use our double XP tokens in game. And then when we're sitting at menus, it doesn't count. So you're not wasting an hour or if you pop two hours of double XP, it's not wasted in the menus. There is a weird issue on Terminus Island where if you're going between the uh, gunnery towers, the frames are so bad. I don't know if anyone has noticed this, but when you're running through the bridges with the uh, fence mesh connectors, if you're running through those, your frames will tank. I don't know if this is an issue on PC, but on Xbox, it is, it's so fucking bad. And I know it's not an Xbox specific issue because it happens on PS5 as well. So that's something they really need to change. They've already done so many quotes, stability and performance issues with zombies. They don't specifically say what those issues were, but I, it doesn't seem like they're doing anything because Terminus Island is still really framey. So that is everything wrong with at least what I have experienced with Black Ops 6 Zombies, specifically a little bit of multiplayer here and there. Do apologize for this video being very long. I think it's probably over like 50 minutes right now, but that's just all the issues that I've been experiencing and the personal things that I think need to be added and changed and removed, etc. But without further ado, like, comment, subscribe, ding the notification bell so you guys know when I upload next. If these issues are fixed when season one drops, I'll make an updated video. But uh, yeah.